how does someone check whether what a vendor thinks a business is worth to them is actually worth that? What can they do? Oh, gee. Um, Again, another podcast topic in its own. But yeah, it, it's so big and my mind's just absolutely spinning on on all the different pieces in there and where to start. I, I guess that business in isolation, it's going to be tough to know um, without going and seeking external support. So if you're looking at it, I, I would be going, right, let's have a look at, at half a dozen or a dozen different businesses and let's see what values they stack up um, at, and then compare each of them. And then you'd be able to go, right, well, for the profit that this one's spitting out, they're asking for this much. But for this business over here, it's spitting out a different profit and they're asking for a different number. Why? And start and learn what are some of the things that drive a business value. Then you'll be able to go, hmm, from what I know about these two different businesses and the industries that they operate in, assuming that they're different industries, um, is does one seem better value than the other? Uh, then, then you'll start and build up that kind of gut intuition feel around, yep, okay, that seems reasonable, or, oh, no, these numbers feel a bit off. The next step would be, okay, this this business looks like a goer, I'll go off and get it valued. And that's where you'd go and uh, seek out a, a business value. So an account, some accountants can do it, um, next advisory can, selfless plug. <laughs> uh, and, and go and get it valued. And, and that's where, again, like due diligence, there's a bit of a deep dive behind the historic numbers and if possible, a forecast. So looking forward mm. and then understanding some of the background, um, future focus, what are some of the risks and opportunities in the business. So trying to high level tell the story that the numbers um, are putting on the page. And then we work out from that, what's the cash that this business spits out on an ongoing basis that's sustainable? So it's after you've paid, it's not net profit and it's not EBITDA, it's cash. So after we've taken into account your interest, your tax, um, we've taken into account um uh, future capex that you need to allow for because that's going to take up some form of cash. What's left? Because ultimately, what's left after all that's said and done, that's what's available to the shareholder to be distributed as earnings. Um, and if if there's consistency of cash over a period of time, that's ultimately what's going to drive the value of the business. And again, depending on the industry and other economic factors. You know, the multiple that is going to be applied to that uh, rate of cash will change. But yeah, we're looking at cash multiplied by risk is going to give you value. Simple as that. Yeah. <laughs> but it's again, it's another tool that you may need to use, right? So you may need someone in your team that can do that part of it because you've done a number of pieces of work in that space where the sale price or vendor's expected price doesn't even come close to what the true value well of you know how you'd do a calculation or others would do a calculation yeah so to illustrate absolute worst case i think that we've ever seen um this is going back quite a few years there was a business that was for sale for uh i want to say about 3.2 3.5 million um and we looked at the numbers high level and i'm just like "Mm, this does not stack up there's something you can Yes, with our numbers background, you can kind of get a bit of a gut feel as to like, oh, is this off or not? Or is it kind of about right? And this just felt way off. And we said to the our client, hey, look, this doesn't seem right. There's just something's going on here. Um, all of a sudden, there's credibility issues and it highlights risk and all of these kind of things. So we say, look, to de-risk this, let's get it valued. And we got it valued. And my Gut said to me when I looked at the numbers originally, I thought, man, this will come through somewhere between 1.5 and 2 million. Um, so quite a contrast to the three point something that they're asking. They went ahead, we did the valuation. Um, if memory serves me right, it came out at about 1.8 something or other, 1.8 million. Wow. Um, needless to say, there was a massive emotional attachment for um, our client uh, who was looking at buying this business. And We'd started some of the due diligence and ultimately they reflected on it. There was a few uh, discussions around the dinner table at their house and they withdrew, they walked away Mm. because you just, you know, you can't go and pay 
$3 million or over $3 million for something that only values up at under two. Uh, there's just, you, there's so much of a gap. If, if they were asking $2 million and it valued up at 1.6, 1.8, yeah, we, you could play with that a little bit. Yeah. You know, like buying a house, buying a business, you can negotiate. The beauty about buying a business is there's a lot you can negotiate with. Um, the purchase price, how the purchase price is broken down. We haven't even got into the tangible and intangible yeah. asset components. Um, there's um, then how it's paid for. It, it's unbelievable. There, there's so many different levers that you can play with uh, and everything's up to um, up for negotiation. How motivated is the vendor to be able to sell? And they save themselves a bit of money there, right? Because they went down the valuation route and then yep. could strip their emotion back and go, you know what, we're not even going to entertain paying two points something for this. Therefore, we don't need to do a stack of due diligence and incur legal fees and stuff like that as well to have all contracts re- reviewed mm. to then go, well, we're not even going to you know, put an offer in on this mm. anyway. So then they don't have to spend that money because they've, basically come to the conclusion it's not worth this. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. they've taken out insurance policy number one and that they claimed on it yeah. and it it was like, yep, that was however much they paid, let's say a couple of grand. Mm-hmm. They spent two two grand to walk away from losing three million dollars. That's I think that's a pretty pretty good return on investment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and a lifetime well, maybe not a lifetime, but years of, of shit if they were, you know, hating it and what that would have done to them. Yeah, the the other thing, just while it skips into my mind and part of the reason why this valuation was a little bit cooked was um Dare I say it, we're still in the post-COVID years, but COVID's being used in the financials, I think, to a degree to pump up numbers because businesses made some big cash. Bad, big, just unbelievable amounts of cash during COVID. And there's been a block of businesses come to market where they're trying to capitalize on that post-COVID. Hey, we've done really well. But you fast forward, I reckon, to next year, when some of these businesses want to sell and they've had a couple of years post COVID as well as the COVID times and it'll show the roller coaster and it's like you you won't be able to sell it for what you thought it was worth in that immediate post COVID environment because that was just an absolute blip. So what we do as part of the due diligence is when asking for the records from the uh, the vendor is we also want pre COVID data mm. to try and normalize what business looked like in a non-COVID environment. Yeah, nice.